We are very lucky to have with us live in the studios this morning, Kashama Sawant. Kashama Swant is an economics professor at Seattle University and Seattle Central Community College. She is a member of the American Federation of Teachers Union Local 1789 and an organizer with Socialist Alternative. And she is a candidate for Washington State House of Representatives, the 43rd District, Position 1. Kashama, thank you very much for coming and spending time with us this morning. Good morning, Mike. Thank you very much for having me. So start out, tell us why are you uh, running as a candidate for the Washington State House of Representatives in the 43rd District and Position 1? Uh, we are, uh, you know, running this campaign uh, in uh, the wake of uh, what's happened uh, over last several decades, not only in the United States, but all over the world. There's been a massive increase in the polarization of society, massive inequality. Uh, you look at the U.S., you know, this is the wealthiest country in the world. Uh, but for decades, the standards of living of the working class, of ordinary people, of uh, you know, ordinary women and children have been deteriorating. And this, is, this has been a systematic process for decades. Poverty rates have gone up. But uh, in addition to, to those chronic uh, problems that ordinary working people face, in, you know, now they're facing the brunt of the Great Recession. And since 2000, uh, 2008, there has been just uh, an unimaginable uh, fall in the living standards of people in the uh, funding they have for education, for basic health, for really, really basic things that, you know, people want. Uh, and in the state of Washington, uh, for decades, we've had uh, the Democratic Party presiding over uh you know, cut after cut after cut to, uh, like I said, basic social services that people rely on, on education. Uh, and, you know, the Democrats are always telling us that, well, you know, the pro progressives, as progressives, you have to support us because we are the only ones standing for you. And we have to do these cuts because, frankly, you know, we have to be fiscally responsible. Uh, there's no money. The state treasury is bankrupt. And so these cuts are inevitable. Uh, and, you know, how many times have you heard Gregoire saying, oh, my hands are tight? But, uh, you know, as an as an activist, uh, as a socialist, as an economics professor, I can tell you that that's a bald faced lie. Washington state is one of the wealthiest states in the country. Uh, we have, uh, you know, a large number of billionaires and millionaires living here. We have some of the most profitable multinational corporations here. And what we've seen in the last several decades is um, a steady erosion of social services and all that money going towards the wealthy and big corporations. So in reality, it's not true that we have no money. In reality, what's happened is a massive redistribution of wealth from the poor and low income to the very wealthy. Uh, the Democrats have given over 500 tax exemptions to big corporations. Even reversing just those will bring in $6.5 billion annually, which is more than enough to reverse all these big cuts that we've seen recently. Uh, and there will be some left over to uh, fund education or health care. Uh, there's been a $10.5 billion cut from um, basic health and education in the, you know, since the recession began. Um, and so we're running uh, to show... Uh, you know, to show everyone what a genuine working class grassroots campaign looks like. What does a genuine working class candidate looks like look like? Um, and um, uh, you know, we are we are also running as an uh, as we are inspired by the Arab Spring, the Wisconsin Uprising, and the Occupy movement. I personally and Socialist Alternative nationally has been very closely involved in the Occupy movement, uh, you know, I was part of Occupy Seattle from day one, and Occupy really changed the dialogue, you know. Three years ago, I, I can't remember people in America actually using the word class, the word capitalism, or the word socialism, but now that's all on the agenda. People are angry about the bailouts. People are asking, how is it that, you know, I'm working so hard endlessly, and I get so little, and my children are going to see a worse standard of living than I did? Uh, how can this be happening in, in, in this country? How, how is it possible that 50,000 people are dying every year in the U.S. Uh, for a lack of health, uh, you know, health insurance? Um, and, you know, we, we want to take Occupy's message to the entire state, to the entire nation. And, uh, uh, you know, we have to face it. This is an election year. Millions of people, those who sympathize with uh, Occupy's message but are not part of the movement, are going to be tuned 
to the elections and what do they have to vote for. They have the Democrats and the Republicans as business as usual. It's a merry-go-round uh, that goes forever, goes on forever, you know, with two big business parties supporting, uh, you know, being the loyal servants of the super wealthy and big corporations and nobody to represent us. You know, we're running because we want, uh, we want to, uh, you know, show that, you know, this is high time. It's high time. Enough. Enough of this um, you know, enough of this insanity where we are getting the shaft uh, over and over again. Uh, we want uh, not only for this campaign to be victorious, but we want this campaign to serve as the starting point of something different. Uh, and uh, we want uh, challengers to the Democratic Party to be running up and down the length of this state and the, this country. And we want uh, this to sow the seeds of a uh, a genuine mass working class party in the United States. So you are running against uh, Jamie Peterson in the 43rd on the uh, first position there. He's a pretty popular candidate, at least in, in that district. What uh, votes would you have done differently that uh, he cast? Well, uh, uh, it's true that Peterson is popular uh, for his advocacy of marriage equality within the Democratic Party, and we applaud that. Uh, we ourselves are fully in, in support of marriage equality and all the full gamut of LGBT rights. But the reality is that even if you just talk about LGBT uh, uh, rights, the LGBT community is not a homogeneous monolith. There are well-off LGBT and there's everyone else. Uh, Peterson uh, did stand up for marriage equality, but he's a corporate lawyer. Most of his you know donations are from corporations. Microsoft Corporation is his largest donor. And... Uh, he is not representing the vast majority of the LGBT community who are in some ways the most vulnerable, one of the most vulnerable communities. The, you know, the LGBT uh, community tends to have um, uh, uh, off the chart statistics on how much they're affected by homelessness, poverty, uh, workplace oppression and workplace discrimination, uh, child abuse, you know, uh, and, and other, uh, other, you know, hor hor horrifying things that they go through. Uh, but in order to uh, actually address those problems, you have to take on the economic debate of this state. And in order to do that, you have to take on the fact that uh, this state is not being run in the interests of ordinary people, LGBT community included. So uh, we are strong supporters of marriage equality. Uh, we were also, and I personally was involved in the leadership of the you know, the rally that was conducted in 2009 in solidarity with the National Equality March. And by the way, the National Equality Mar March happened because progressives and LGBT rights supporters were completely fed up and uh, angry with the Obama administration for complete inaction over, you know, over marriage equality and don't ask, don't tell and other issues that deeply affect them. But in, aside from that, you know, you asked me what would I do different. If you look at Jamie Peterson's voting record on budget cuts, uh, it's almost entirely uh, anti-worker, anti-labor, uh, and anti-working class. Uh, he has voted for uh, m mandatory furloughs for state employees. That is something that is affect directly affecting many of my colleagues in the community college system. Uh, he has voted to penalize uh, early retirement. So that's something that affects uh, people who do physically demanding labor, like you know, uh, bus drivers at Metro. Um, he also recently voted to brutally attack workers' comp, which is, uh, you know, the existing workers' comp system gave a very, very minimal, very modest uh, 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 redressal to people who are uh, injured on the job. And now he has voted to attack that. And uh, I I'm not sure if your listeners are aware of this, but the Washington State Labor Council, which represents, you know, most of the largest unions, uh, refused to endorse uh, either Frank Chop or Jamie Peterson. Those are the two Democrats running in my district because they're angry about uh, the systematic uh, gutting of workers' rights. All right. So talk some more about specifics that you, uh, if you were elected, that you would enact uh, in this, at the state level. Right. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, uh, that question also can be followed up with uh, the question that you just asked, which is because they're related, you know, because... Uh, uh, you know, we are not running against any one person per se. Uh, both Jamie Peterson and Frank Job, uh, uh, you know, as individuals and as members of the Democratic Party, represent the Democratic Party agenda. So we are running uh, uh, to uh, bring into question uh, the Democratic Party's agenda, which is strongly aligned with uh, big business, with finance, uh, and uh, with the super wealthy. 
And we are, in our campaign uh, manifesto, we're saying that, you know, we urgently need to address a jobs crisis that is really decimating, uh, uh, you know, ordinary people, the youth. I mean, look at youth unemployment. It's crazy. Most of my students uh, are, uh, you know, in school are students who find it very hard to pay for school, but they don't find jobs out there either. You know, they're they're facing, you know, a, a, a double, double whammy there. Uh, and so we are calling for... Uh, a massive green jobs program because we want to address uh, uh, the lack of jobs and also the most urgent environmental questions as well. Um, we want full funding for public education and for the basic health program, which provides just a very minimal uh, health care for people. But we're also calling for single payer health care statewide. We want full, f full funding for public transit and we want uh, state investment in um, um, you know, better quality public transit, you know, especially mass transit. Um, and I can I can go on and on, but uh, but those are the those are the main main uh, points we are raising. We are also, you know, our campaign also stands steadfast uh, with people who have been uh, directly or indirectly victimized by police brutality. And the Seattle Police Department is uh, just notorious for the kind of uh, brutality it unleashes in many ways on uh, people of color. On immigrant immigrants, on uh, also, I mean, Occupy has also, you know, uh, shown uh, the reality of uh, where the poli uh, you know police force stand. The police force takes its orders from Mayor McGinn, who on you know on paper may not be Democrat or Republican, but he's clearly aligned with the Democratic establishment of the city and the state. And the uh, SPD takes its orders from from uh, from McGinn. And and look at the. Uh, look at the way they have uh, unleashed a repression on Occupy activists. I mean, they have, you know, on multiple occasions, uh, pepper sprayed and tear gassed. They even did that to an octogenarian woman activist like uh, named Dorley Rainey, who, is, who, by the way, is a wonderful woman. Um, and they've this, done this again and again. And uh, I'm sure many of you have heard that very recently, a couple of weeks ago, there was a completely uh, outrageous SWAT raid on uh, on a house which you know which has uh, activists from Occupy Seattle and you had these this group of uh, uh, you know sort of paramilitary forces who were armed with stun grenades and uh, automatic weapons armed to the teeth and what were they looking for for you know reading material and clothing anarchist clothing I mean that's that's completely ridiculous we we are ca calling for a democratically elected civilian uh, oversight committee to preside over the police's actions, we want we want the uh, state to work for uh, the in, in the interests of ordinary people. And m most people uh, that we come across, I mean, we we tabled uh, uh, several days in order to collect uh, you know signatures to get on the ballot. Uh, we collected 1,052 signatures in the process. We talked to over 2,000 people. I'm yet to meet a person who strongly disagrees with what we're talking about because what we're talking about is rational and something that most ordinary people want. You know, people want funding for education. People are tired of the cuts to education. I mean, look at my district itself, the 43rd district. The, the, that district uh, includes uh, two of the most important state institutions, Seattle Central Community College and the University of Washington in Seattle. And these two institutions have seen some of the most <laughs> egregious cuts uh, to their funding. And uh, between 2008 and 2013, now the University of Washington is, is you know, set to see over 70 percent increase in tuition. I mean, that's outrageous. Who, who exactly in this state do they think is going to be able to pay this kind of tuition? Wages haven't kept up with inflation, but tuition is skyrocketing well beyond the inflation rate. Uh, how are the youth of this state supposed to get an education? You know, everybody says, oh, you just, you know, ri raise yourself up by your bootstraps, get an education, get a job. But how are you supposed to get an education if, uh, uh, you know, K-12 through schools get, clo you know, closed down systematically? Uh, teachers are not paid enough. I can personally tell you as a teacher, um, you know, teachers are some of the most uh, overworked and underpaid uh, uh, state employees. Uh, how how are we supposed to do our job if we can't pay our even for our most basic needs, and how and where are we going to go? I mean, this is essentially, uh, you know, voting for the Democrats 
year after year after year. For, for, for progressives to vote for the Democrats year after year after year is basically, you know, it's like insanity. I mean, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous says, you know, ins- what is the definition of insanity? It's like engaging in the same behavior over and over again and expecting a different result. That's, that is, that's exactly what it is, what dem- voting for Democrats is like. Because we know for decades, they, you know, what they have done. They have, um, every step of the way, they have paid lip service to uh, what ordinary people want, what uh, the most uh, vulnerable and oppressed communities need. Uh, but the moment they're elected, they turn around and do exactly the opposite of that. And uh, they're, um, they're, they are every bit as pro big big business and pro finance and pro wealthy as the Republican. The difference between the Democrats and the Republicans is that the Democrats pay lip service to these issues. They have a different rhetoric, as I said. Uh, they're more skillful at doing this. And in reality, uh, you know, we don't want the Republicans. Obviously, you know, we're socialists. We're completely against the uh, you know blatant right wing Tea Party type of agenda that the Republican Party has. But what we're telling people is that. Look, if we want to fight the right and if we want to end this insanity, then it is time to stop, uh, you know, falling for this good cop, bad cop routine that big business has us trapped into. You know, these two parties are parties of the one percent. It's time to have a party of the 99 percent. I believe one of the uh, items on your platform is a minimum wage of $15. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. One of the commenters, uh, there's uh, m- multiple articles up on your website from, I believe, Capitol Hill News talking about your campaign. One of the commenters, and I think it was a couple commenters there, said, well, $15 a minimum wage will just drive small businesses out of the state. What's your response to that? Um, well, first of all, just from uh, economic research, uh, I can tell you that that's not actually very conclusive, the, this idea that uh, minimum wage increase drives out businesses. That's not entirely conclusive, but there is a grain of truth in that. Uh, yes, it is true, not only that you know low minimum wage is something that is obviously preferred by big business, it's also true that uh, uh, a tax system that is favorable for big business and multinational corporations is obviously, you know, they're going to want that. That's, that's very clear. Uh, it is also true that uh, Boeing is here uh, and has stayed here because, precisely because the wa- the state of Washington has the most regressive tax system in the entire nation. I mean, think about it. We are supposed to be a liberal state. Uh, uh, we don't have a tax. We d- we. I mean, we have some taxes on the wealthy and corporations, but very, very, very uh, minimal. And uh, it comes with uh, any number of loopholes, which allows them to uh, you know work around that uh, and. A lot of the tax revenues are raised through sales tax, which is one of the most regressive ways you can raise taxes. I mean, that that hits low income and poor people, uh, you know, in in a in a very big way. Uh, low income people end up paying effectively 79.9 percent of their income on uh, taxes, you know, through a sales tax, whereas the super rich pay less than three percent of of their income. So this is totally ridiculous. Um, but in response to this question of you know won't 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 corporations uh, leave the state. I mean, I would say that, uh, first of all, you know, I'd like to give an example of, uh, of uh, you know, this kind of thing. Uh, between 2000 and 2003, uh, there were uh, two initiatives on the ballot. Uh, one initiative uh, was to uh, reduce class sizes in K-12 schools, and the other initiative was to uh, increase uh, K-12 teacher salary by a small amount. Uh, and both the initiatives got, uh, you know, uh, more than 60 to 65 percent, you know, voters voting for it. Not only that, the uh, the initiative to reduce class sizes actually got a historically high majority for a ballot initiative in the state of Washington. Um, what what would you expect in, in you know, we are a democracy. Uh, what would you expect uh, uh, in a democracy for the state government to do when the, you know, the voters have spoken, so to say, you know? Um, the governor, the Democratic governor at that time, Gary Locke, said, oh, well, it's too, you know, it's too bad you want this, but we don't have the money to fund this. Uh, more than 30,000 teachers went to Olympia, March in, in Olympia, in, in, to Capitol Hill, saying, no, that, that's ridiculous. You know, the voters have spoken. This is a democracy. You have to fund these initiatives. You know, we need this. And he said, no, we don't have the money. And he turned around and gave $3.2 billion to Boeing because, you know, well, they would leave the state. And that was a time when, you know, they were going to build a Dreamliner plant. And we, you know, we were, he was doing that in the name of protecting jobs. 
Do you know how many jobs it was going to create? Maybe, I mean, you know, we should check exact numbers, but um, probably uh, a few, uh, maybe maybe 800 to 1,000 jobs. But in that same period, you know, in the period of those three or four years, Boeing cut more than 10,000 jobs. Uh, so one thing I would I would I would uh, men, you know I would say you know in summary is that you know we we need to go and look at actually how many jobs are being created, but furthermore uh, I would you know as a socialist I would go well beyond that and I would say that you know as long as we accept the agenda of capitalism, this will be a race to the bottom. You know, we wh- what are we saying? We are saying that, oh, we have to compete for uh, corporate corporations and their jobs. So we have to create the most favorable environment for them, which means what? Which means uh, further and further decimation of social services, further and further decimation of education and, and an increasingly regressive tax environment. How is this helping us and where is this going to end? You know, uh, I, the question is, where does where is the stopping point for all this? There is none. You know, that is the problem with capitalism. Uh, if every state in, in the United States is going to compete on the basis of capitalism by accepting the logic of the system, then yes, this will be a never-ending race to the bottom. Instead, what we need to say is that, no, we refuse to accept this agenda. We need for society to work for the 99%, not in the interests of the super wealthy and, and the big corporations. So what we need is full funding for all our basic needs. We need uh, good quality housing, good quality health care, good quality education. Uh, uh, a safe environment, libraries, funding for elderly and disabled care. We need all this, not because they are luxuries, but because that's what a human society should look like. And don't come and tell me that there aren't enough resources because there's more than enough money. What we need is a political voice in Washington, uh, in, in Olympia and in Washington, D.C., which will uh, uh, you know, strenuously argue in favor of these issues. And if Boeing does not like it, you know, Tough luck. You know, the factories and equipment belong to the state of Washington, to the people of the state of Washington, so they stay here. The workers who work in Boeing are right here in the state of Washington. If Boeing executives don't like it, they can leave if they want to, but I can tell you it's not that easy. But if they want to, they can, because we, we the, 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 the resources and the means of production belong to the state of Washington. The workers belong here. We can say that, no, we are going to keep this here, and if you want, you can leave. And before people say that, you know, oh, that's illegal, I, I, I want to say that the Supreme Court has provided an injunction of eminent <laughs> domain that uh, the government uses all the time in favor of big corporations. It's time that people used it for themselves. So t- you've mentioned uh, eliminating all the corporate tax loopholes. Uh, what specifically would you restructure in terms of taxes to uh, fix this, fix the system? Uh, well, first of all, you know, there are, uh, like I mentioned, there are over 500 tax exemptions. You know, they're too numerous to name right now, but, you know, they are all listed in, in different websites. And I would actually recommend uh, a particular, uh, two particular websites for people to go to, uh, uh, you know, Washington Budget and Policy Priorities and, and Economic Opportunity Institute, which are fantastic groups of people who are doing a lot of this work. And they have, in fact, if you go to eoionline.org, you, you have a whole list of uh, options that you can you can you can do in order to actually restructure the tax system but uh closing those those loopholes w- would be the very first thing we should be doing and then we should be uh, uh uh you know people say we need an income tax i actually wouldn't say it that way what i what i would say is we need a tax on the wealthy you know a tax on the income and the wealth of the wealthy I don't want tax uh, an income tax on ordinary people. We're paying enough tax as, as it is. You know, we are paying m- too much, actually. We need to eliminate the sales tax, and we need to uh, establish a, a tax on uh, the wealthy and big corporations. And also, you know, there's a BNO tax, a business, o- business and occupation tax. If you see the way it's structured right now in the state, uh, it it may it's there in name, but in reality, what is happening is it, it makes it very easy for big corporations to evade the taxes, but it places most of the burden on, on small businesses. I don't support that. So, you know, we, we need to restructure that. So that is also a progressive tax, meaning that the big corporations pay the big share of it. Um, and uh, also there is uh, another big, very urgent issue of uh, funding, which is funding for Metro, King County Metro. In fact, in that context, I wanted to mention that uh, our campaign just got endorsed by a huge majority uh, by the membership of uh, the ATU Amalgamated Transit Union Local 587, which represents uh, metro drivers and other 
uh, um, uh, you know, employees, you know, who do vehicle maintenance and all, and all that. And, you know, the reason they, they uh, uh, you know, uh, got involved in, in this campaign and allowed me to come and speak there was because they are facing a very urgent uh, funding problem. You know, they, they are going, they are potentially facing more than 30 percent cuts in in less than 20 months unless they can uh, another unless olympia is able to figure out another uh funding source for them but the but the reason they're in this situation is because they're you know systematically uh different measures by the state legislature have have cut uh, uh, uh you know cut the stable f- uh, source of funding that they had uh to begin with uh, and so, you know, we are we are saying that, you know, that needs to be reversed as well. And we need for that. There used to be a progressive uh, car tax that was in place that w- that provided a stable funding for Metro. We're calling for that to come back. Um, and I would say I would I would uh, direct uh, your listeners to our website, votesavant.org. Uh, and just to spell it, uh, it's V-O-T-E-S-A-W-A-N-T dot org. There's a lot more information there, and I also invite people if they want to uh, talk more with us about this. Uh, I, I welcome I welcome your listeners to get in touch with us directly and talk to me personally and to our campaign team, and you know we can we can have more of a conversation. But you know, I would I would say that you know there is no shortage of ideas and strategies to solve these problems. That is not the issue. Uh, the problem is that it's a political question. The problem is that you don't have a political voice for these issues in in Olympia. Both the Democrats and the Republicans are bending over backward to, um, you know, to be uh, to be fulfilling the interests of big business. And let's face it, the interests of big business are directly in conflict with the interests of ordinary people. Only about two minutes left. What's your uh, response to the uh, strangers? endorsement of uh, not for uh, position one, but being a write-in for uh, Frank Chop's position two. Yeah, that was very interesting. I mean, first of all, I, I, I really, as, as our press release indicated, uh, we uh, uh, we welcome the endorsement uh, by the stranger. Uh, I had a very interesting conversation with them. Uh, but I also wanted to say that, uh, you know, I disagree with, with their outlook. I mean, they're saying that they endorse Peterson uh, because they don't think he's a problem in the Democratic Party and that I should have run against Frank Chop. And just, you know, uh, just very quickly, the reason we were originally running against Frank Chop, but the reason we switched was for left unity uh, to be not non-sectarian because there's another anti-cuts candidate uh, that was running against Frank Chop. But in reality, uh, it's not true that Peterson is any different than Chop. Peterson's uh, uh, voting record on uh, issues that uh, matter to ordinary people on budget cuts and so on are is virtually indistinguishable Frank, from, from Frank Chop. And, and people have to understand that this is not about one person or one individual. This is about the Democratic Party's agenda and all these people who are Democratic Party legislators, they are carrying out that agenda, and we have to fight that agenda any way we can. All right. Um, we are talking with Kashama Savant. She is an economics professor at Seattle University and Seattle Central Community College and candidate for Washington State House of Representatives in the 43rd District, position one. And again, uh, can you tell people how they can contact you if they uh, want further information on your campaign? Yes, the best way to uh, get in touch uh, with us uh, to get further information on our campaign is to go to our campaign website. That's votesawant.org, and I can spell it again. It's vote, V-O-T-E, and my last name, S-A-W-A-N-T, and as in Nancy, T as in Tom, dot org. And you can also go to our Facebook uh, campaign website. You can do Vote Samant on Facebook and find it. Uh, and you can also go to socialistalternative.org, which is our organization's website. You know, any of these would give you uh, further information. All right. Well, with that, we are unfortunately out of time. I want to thank you very much for coming and spending time with us this morning. Thank you, Mike. I really appreciate it.